Friday, November 30th, 2018, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This morning, I want to talk about Brexit and why I think it's uh, an engineered crisis or a non-crisis, as uh, Lindsay Williams uh, called the energy non-crisis of the 1970s. Uh, why it's a scapegoat, in my opinion. And I've made uh, several videos uh, about this in the past. One of them in particular, just before the, the referendum, June 22nd, 2016, uh, the title of my video was, Will Brexit Be Used as Scapegoat for a Global Financial Reset? Uh, the other one was last year, uh, in no. In November, so about a year ago, Britain's road to ruin is paved with insurmountable debts. Uh, I spoke about how the debt is the problem and that Brexit is just a distraction. And then it, I didn't talk about it being an engineered crisis, but af at, after uh, rereading this book, I kind of think it is. And um, so um, I'll put the these two videos up in the cards and in the link uh Below in the uh, in the description below, I put the links to it as well. Um, before that, of course, we'll quickly look at what the markets are doing this morning. Go through it very quickly. Uh, you know, markets are pretty uh, not going anywhere at the moment, really. I know they rallied a couple of days ago, but yesterday was a pretty non a non day, so to speak. It's just before 8 a.m. Spot gold still stuck between uh, 12.20 and 12.30. We're at 12.24.60, uh, almost right in the middle of that range, up half a cent. Uh, silver, 14.32, up two cents. Nothing to see there at the moment. Dow up 18, 25.342. Uh, S&P, 27.38, unchanged. NASDAQ, 100. Future up five points, 6,900. Uh, the pound's down uh, 11 pips, uh, marginally at 127.76. Key support for the pound uh, for the traders out there is 127.00, in my opinion. Uh, Euro 113.80, down about 11 uh, pips. Dollar unchanged against the yen, 113.45. Uh, dollar uh, uh, slightly uh, higher against the yuan at 694.27 uh, crude oil traded below 50 yesterday but we're back up above 51 now 51.50 uh, crude uh, brent is just above 60 uh, 10 year yield is around 302 pretty much unchanged uh, overnight uh, dropped quite a bit yesterday so Brexit, um, why do I think it's an engineered crisis? Well, I think uh, the powers that be, the people who run our world. I mean, I remember George Bush Sr. Uh, I can't find this interview, but I, I remember he was interviewed maybe 20 years ago or so, maybe less, by one of the major networks. Uh, and uh, the interviewer asked him, uh, do you watch uh, TV? Do you watch the news? Uh, and he laughed, actually, and he said, I don't need to do that. I, I know the news before it comes out. <laughs> so I, I was trying to find this video, but it, it's been taken out. I mean, you might be able to find it, um, but uh, it just goes to show you that, you know, how the world, uh, nothing is uh, by accident. Very little is by accident, at least not the important events, in my opinion. And... Uh, I highly recommend The Energy Non-Crisis by Lindsay Williams. He talks about how in 1972, the U.S. federal government ordered U.S. oil companies to shut down pipelines, bringing oil from the West to the East Coast. And that was prior to the oil embargo, uh, you know, the Saudi oil embargo in 1973. You, I remember that well, uh, that period. I, I was about nine or ten and uh, prices, prices, prices at the pump went up. Even in Brazil, it affected Brazil, of course. You, you, you heard and you could see in the news all the cars lining up or queuing up outside uh, uh, gas stations or petrol stations in the U.S. In Brazil, it even led to the uh, Petrobras, the Brazilian uh, oil company, national oil company, uh, developing uh, alcohol as the fuel for cars in the late 70s. So, but uh, 
yeah, I highly recommend this book. So Lindsay William talks about how he was with the rancher uh, in Wyoming in 1972. And he told oh, Lindsay Williams uh, that, uh, you know, the pipeline running through his ranch uh, was not uh, pumping any more oil because uh, they said that uh, the government had ordered them to turn off the pipeline in 1972, that the crisis was engineered. Uh, yeah, of course, we blame the, the Saudis and the boycott, OPEC boycott, but there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, I won't go uh, into uh, the reasons why they did that, but I'm because I want to talk about Brexit. And that's why I think Brexit uh, is an engineered crisis, um, because I, I, I thought it was very surprising uh, when the Conservative Party manifesto for the 2015 uh, election said that they were going to give the people uh, the right to vote on EU membership. I just thought it was like... I thought it was strange that they're going to do that. I don't think they needed to do that, but uh, not. And I'm not talking about the uh, pros and cons of leaving the EU here. I just want to talk about uh, Brexit as a crisis. Uh, since you know it was voted, uh, people voted to leave. It's been a cr a crisis and the saga, and e especially now with uh, the de 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 deal. You know, this uh, negotiations with the EU, uh, the prospect of a no deal, the prospect of a delay, you know, The Economist magazine, the people who wrote in 1988 about uh, a new currency in 2018, um, they're saying that uh, a no deal, uh, well, that's the head, the cover last week for the magazine, uh, no deal is a train wreck. Uh, this week we've had Mark Carney. Uh, of the Bank of England, the the, gov the Canadian governor, and and I've got nothing against, against Canadians, but uh, <laughs> that he's the first foreign uh, governor of the Bank of England. I think he came in in 2012. The Tories are already in power, and you kind of wonder, you know, if they're going to create a great crisis. Uh, they don't want someone at the Bank of England at the helm. They can have a foreigner, you know, that they can blame, not an Englishman. Uh, at the helm. Just think about that. And he's been paid a lot. He's been given a 500,000 pound stipend for to rent a house. And they're trying to keep him until past uh, March 29th, 2019, which is the date that we're supposed to leave uh, the EU. So he said, the, uh, I saw these headlines the other day, uh, or yesterday, uh, he says here in the Times, no, no deal Brexit would be the worst crash since the 1930s. Uh, the Guardian says, Project Hysteria, how the papers covered Mark Carney's Brexit forecast. Uh, so, first of all, uh, worst crash since the 1930s. No, I think the worst crash since the 1930s is ongoing for the UK economy. And that started, you know, with the almost total collapse of the financial system in 08, uh, out of which the taxpayer in the UK had to uh, step up to the plate, not willingly, but forcibly, and accumulate, uh, you know, go from 600, 700 billion in national debt to a present level of over 2 trillion in debt. That's the crisis, Mr. Uh, Carney. And all the statistics that uh, the economy is doing really well, it has recovered, it, it's all uh, kind of uh, manufactured, I would say, as well. It's not real. Uh, people out in the street, uh, you know, the common person is not doing great. Maybe the city of London is still doing well because they were bailed out and they, they didn't lose uh, all their fortune. Uh, and they've even made more because now they're backstopped by the government and the taxpayer. Uh, so what about proof that the economy isn't doing well? Well, I've got the big issue here, dot com. Big issue actually is a magazine sold by homeless people in the UK trying to, you know, uh, you can voluntarily donate as much as you want and they sell you the magazine. They have an online uh, publication. It says... And this is, uh, it says here, the UN Poverty Report highlights a national emergency that we must act on. The government has employed weapons of mass distraction ever since Special Rapporteur Philip 
Alston slammed its policies for inflicting utter misery on Brits in poverty. Liam Garrity says the Deming report could be a watershed moment for social rights. So I'm not trying to discuss this issue either. I'm just trying to use this article to show you. But it says here that one point, this report says 1.5 million people in the UK are uh, are destitute and cannot afford basic essentials despite living in the world's fifth biggest, well, fifth biggest economy. Uh, so here's Mark Carney saying that uh, uh, no deal Brexit would cause a crisis like the 1930s, but we're already in the 1930s crisis, uh, Mr. Carney. Uh, and then you have uh, the Independent. Uh, this is from September this year. More than 14 million people in the UK living in po poverty, major report uh, finds. While 14 million, that's 21% of the UK economy. UK, uh, sorry, of the UK, 14 million people. Uh, 61 million people in the UK, roughly, I would say. Uh, so 21% live in poverty. So isn't that a 1930s crisis already? So what I'm trying to say here is... Uh, they're going to blame uh, Brexit, a uh, no deal, or, you know, this can be a distraction. I guess what's really been going on for 10 years in the UK that we have been, this is like, <clears throat> you know, from 2008 to 2018, this is uh, the 1930s, Mr. Carney. So he's trying to like, uh, uh, how can I say, distract people, put the spotlight on Brexit and uh, blame, you know, those people who voted to leave, uh, blame, uh, you know, uh, the no deal. Uh, and why do I say it's engineered? Uh, well, because I think uh, David Cameron knew it would be a big mess when he called for this referendum. And I wouldn't put it past them that they actually uh, tinkered with the vote so that it would go through as a Brexit. <laughs> and... Uh, so that they could use this because you look at the situation in the UK, uh, the insurmountable debts that we have. As we don't have a reserve currency, yes, we, we've uh, debased the currency since the crisis and from $2 to the pound to now, you know, $127. Uh, but, um, but it's got to be done more because we still can't deal with the, with the debt. Uh, we were supposed to, according to the Tories in 2010 when they came to power with the Lib Dems, we we're supposed to have a no budget, uh, annual budget deficit by 2015. Here we are in 2019 almost, and we're still running a budget deficit. So the debt is becoming more and more insurmountable. The economy is slowing down. The cost of living has been rising by 5-10%, not the 2% that they tell us. Uh, so the economy uh, is is in the 1930s style uh, depression, really, uh, and they're trying to uh, say it's all due to Brexit, and that's why I think it's an engineered crisis. So they can put the spotlight away from the establishment that bailed out the banks, and and the, by the establishment I don't only mean uh, the conservatives, but also labor. Labor bailed out the banks, they were in power, and the conservatives, even though they have uh, uh, instituted the policy, uh, the policies that they have of so-called austerity, uh, in spite of that, government has gotten even bigger. The, you know, the, the, the national debt has gotten bigger. How, if they really cut anything, if they had cut uh, gov the size of government, the national debt would have gone down. So... There you have it. That's my opinion. Uh, you can have another opinion. Comment below in the description. I'm happy to discuss with you. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, please like, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can also follow me on Steemit, DTube, and on Twitter. I wish you a great weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.